That was the Golden Age One Sorry, for Mother SpongeBob. That was the day. It's June 29, 2001, and today we're going to take a look at two disturbances. We have Invest 95L, which is currently approaching the Caribbean Islands at this time, and we have Invest 97L, which is currently in the middle of the main development region. But before I begin, make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather because make sure to like if you like this video, make sure to turn on post notifications if you want to see even more weather because So let's begin by taking a look at the current. Um, water vapor imagery we have invest 95l right over here and it's quickly approaching the caribbean islands it is moving quite fast at around 20 miles per hour and if we were to take a look um zooming in to the satellite imagery for invest 95l you could probably tell that it isn't very organized at this time you see earlier during the run it looked fairly organized but now you see all the clouds are scattered um, around the thunderstorm activity isn't really focused on one area and part of the reason is due to the wind shear that's over this storm and while there isn't a crazy amount of wind shear it's enough to at least tear the storm apart and it's making it difficult for a center circulation to form because one of the reasons um, that this storm is struggling right now is because of how fast it's moving since it's moving at a speed right around 20 miles per hour to the west it becomes really hard for the southern side of this storm to really get st very strong um, lower level westerly winds since the lower level winds from the, the trade winds are pretty much going against the west the um, winds on the southern side of the circulation and that's pretty much making it difficult for the storm to really focus in one area and um, find a uh, center circulation where rotation is visible if we were to take a look at the current chances that the national hurricane center is giving this um um, 95L to develop, you see that the chance has decreased from earlier today and into yesterday, where yesterday the chance of development was 40% within, within the next five days. However, it has slightly lowered to 30% over the next five days, as it seems like the National Hurricane Center is detecting that conditions might be slightly less favorable for tropical cyclone development and one of the reasons why is taking, is the wind shear like I showed you um because I'm taking a look at the wind shear um as of right now um showing you guys you see that ahead of this storm there's a decent amount of wind shear over Hispaniola at this point over Puerto Rico and even into Cuba where we do see the wind shear get a little bit higher and it's increasing in some areas where you see the um, where you see the um, straight lines, um, you see that it's increasing the white lines. However, the light blue lines mean that the wind shear is decreasing. And you see the wind shear is increasing where the wind shear is already uh, is already located. So it seems like the wind shear isn't going to wind down as the storm moves further and further westward. And that's going to limit this storm from really developing, especially since it's moving so fast. The uh, southern side of the storm won't have westerly winds strong enough to really support a rapid amount of convection pretty, because tropical cyclones need all sides of all sides of the low pressure to be very windy or at least have strong enough winds to support rapid convection to be able to attain tropical storm or hurricane status because if one if the winds are so lopsided where only one side is getting the strongest winds while the other it's very weak it becomes very hard for the air molecules to really wrap around the entire low pressure system to support rapid convection to increase the wind speed so as a result since the winds are going to be so lopsided with the storm it's going to be really um for invest 95 oh it's going to be very hard for this storm to develop over the coming over the coming days um if we were to take a look at the um at the wind shear in the i mean the winds in the lower levels of the atmosphere um you're gonna see that it's gonna be fairly lopsided where the um, northern side of the storm will get the majority of the winds here's a low pressure and you see the strongest winds are on the northern side while the winds on the southern side are pretty much non-existent so this is going to limit this storm from really having a good chance of developing however what could change the outcome what could increase chances is, is if the storm moves slower as a result of weaker um lower level winds coming from the east um since because if the lower level winds are slower and the upper level winds as well that means that the winds will sort of 
that that means that there's going to be a greater chance that the winds will wrap around on the southern side as well which would make it more conducive for development but as of right now it seems like the computer models are detecting that the with the lower level and the upper level winds are just going to be a little bit too strong to support um tropical cyclone formation as a gfs isn't really leaning on developing this taking a look at the wind shear with the solar pressure system um here's invest 95 l you see that there isn't a ton of wind shear but there's just enough to break this storm apart and the higher cloud tops apart and moving forward you see the wind shear continues as a result of this upper level low that's located um, just off the coast of florida and this um, upper level ridge that's also imposing a little bit of a southerly um wind um wind direction oh um over in the upper levels of the atmosphere so this is going to limit this storm from really developing and it doesn't help either that there's going to be a decent amount of dry air with the storm it isn't going to be a ton where it's going to swallow the storm up but there's going to be just enough to the point where it might struggle a bit against this dry air because you see the a lot of dry air is towards the western side of this storm and since the upper level winds are moving um from the south that means that some dry air that's towards the south of it will um, eventually entrain this storm and that's going to make it a little bit difficult for it to develop things through the dry air but the primary reason is wind shear that's going to limit this develop the development of the storm what really could change it is if maybe the wind shear is lighter maybe this upper level low moves further northward to a point where it doesn't affect the wind shear won't have much of an influence on the storm however at this point it seems more likely that wind shear is going to be over the storm for um for the coming days and that's going to limit its development and you might be asking how about beyond five days well beyond five days it becomes very difficult to forecast and going beyond the five day point i think the chance of tropical cyclone development remains even lower because if you go further northward of course there's going to be more wind shear you're closer to the jet stream there's going to be more low pressures moving through the united states and still we're very early in the hurricane season it's not like august and september where we don't really see that much wind shear anymore um, throughout the Atlantic. This still, we're still in the month of June, approaching July. So there's still going to be a lot of wind shear, um, even as this heads further northward. So even beyond five days at this point, the chance of this developing remains low. But again, it's a forecast beyond five days. Things could change in the future. But as of right now, chance of development remains low. However, for Invest 95L, you should still experience impacts in the Lesser Antilles and the Caribbean, where thunder, um, enhanced thunderstorm activity should be expected in the Lesser Antilles, and this extends to the Caribbean islands as well. So you guys want to make um, be aware of that at least, that there's going to be at least increased thunderstorm activity, whether this develops or not, and the chances of 95L developing are currently low. However, um, the Caribbean islands and the Lesser Antilles um, also need to pay attention to this next storm that's going to come right behind it. But I'm taking a look at what the um, computer models are forecasting with 95L. Um, you see that at, for right now, a lot of the computer models are actually bringing this to tropical storm strength beyond the five day mark, which is quite interesting um however it's going to point out that these computer models aren't really um as reliable as let's say the national hurricane center's guidance so definitely take it with the grain of salt but it's at least interesting to see that the, the um the computer models are leaning towards um bringing um high um um tropical storm strength with this storm despite the national hurricane center giving this a low chance of development so it's something to be aware of but i'd say take the National Hurricane Center's guidance over the computer models since the computer models have different variables that may change um that may change on um, what actually happens that that may change the forecast and in terms of the track of this storm not really um not really anything um a major uh, not a major difference from what the National Hurricane Center is saying it's taking it towards Hispaniola and Cuba so you guys should expect rain but it's interesting to see that the a lot of computer models again are taking a stronger storm closer to the united states so it is at least something to keep in mind even beyond the five day point but just be aware that the national hurricane service guidance is the guidance to go for when um forecasting this storm as there's so a lot of uncertainty beyond five days but 
at least be aware of it throughout the Caribbean. However, that is not the only storm we are taking a look at in this video. We're also going to take a look at 97L, which does have a higher chance of development. And not only that, I think it has a higher potential of becoming an even stronger storm because it's going to come just right behind this storm. And by the time it reaches the Caribbean, it might be in an area more conducive than what 95L was experiencing for tropical cyclone development. And taking a look at it, you see it's a bunch of scattered thunder um, showers as of right now. Um, let's take a closer look at it. And you see it's very scattered. The thunderstorm is not really an area where all the convection is focused towards. And we do see um, thunderstorms on the southern side of the storm, northern side, but it does have a lot of pockets of dry air within the storm. So nothing, um, so there's nothing really, um, um, going right now when it comes to tropical cyclone formation and another thing we need to point out is that it's still over it's still just to the um east enough to where it's gonna it's over um less than um less than 80 degree water so um, as a result it won't have as much convection however it is expected as this moves further westward to the warmer waters of the atlantic we should see more convection begin to increase especially since the um, environment might be more conducive for tropical cycle formation. In terms of what the National Hurricane Center is giving this um, to forecast, you see that the formation chance over the next 48 hours remains low at 20%, but it does increase beyond the 48 hour mark um, to 40%. So we need to certainly keep in mind, and you could probably tell by the track of this, is that it's moving a large distance, which means that it's gonna move relatively quickly, which is, Gonna be, it's sort of going to be the same situation as what 95L is dealing with that. This storm just might move too fast to the east and lower level winds might be too fast to the east for the southern side to really get any strong winds. And that might prevent it from developing into a tropical cyclone if the lower level winds are too strong to the east, the trade winds. Um, because that means the southern side of the storm won't be strong enough to attain a um, tropical storm status or a full circulation um if we were to take a look at a gfs model and the lower level winds um with 97l as it moves further westward you see that all the strong winds are towards the northern side of this storm and the southern side it, the winds are almost non-existent which shows that it's gonna really have a tough time getting those winds on the southern side um because it's gonna move so fast to the um to the west which means that the northern side will get the brunt of the winds while the southern side will miss out on a lot of the winds and as a result this won't reach its max potential with um the southern winds so weak however the gfs model still does forecast this to become a tropical storm and it's gonna head uncomfortably close to the caribbean islands um like the dominican republic haiti um puerto rico should definitely be watching and even towards cuba where we do see those strong winds impact you guys um, be just beyond the five day mark. And, and um, it's also um, at least something to be aware of in the Southern United States, because um, like I said, a lot of tracks that go like this, it's always a concern because um, if it goes to the Northwest, because chances are it could hit anywhere within the Southeast United States. So it's at least something to be aware of in the United States. I won't go as far as to say that uh, US impact is likely or that a tropical storm will make landfall because there's still a ton of uncertainty left because um, by the time it reaches somewhere in the US, it's probably gonna be right around the six to eight day marks, which is way too far to forecast um, for any um, rely um, reliably. So we just need to um, wait and see how the forecast changes, but yeah, the development of this storm really all depends on how fast it moves. If it moves slower, there's more likely of a chance we're going to see this storm. Um, we're going to see this storm um, strengthen a little bit more since the southern side will get more winds. Um, however, if it moves faster, it's less likely we're going to see a full circulation for this tropical storm to form since it's um, since the sun side of the storm won't really get enough winds um, to have a full circulation to attain tropical storm status and you see but by the time this storm moves into the caribbean sea the wind shear will definitely wind down because this upper level low will move um that was bringing um strong 
win, upper level winds to invest 95L will eventually move northward and we're going to see this ridge um, move at an angle to where the wind shear will be light in the Caribbean Sea so that certainly could promote tropical cyclone formation however you see the blue lines um, over this storm yeah that represents how fast um, how much faster the upper level winds are to lower level winds and that could break the storm apart and make it difficult for it to develop however um, and it's going to stay with the storm all the way through um, however the wind shear will certainly be lighter than what 95L will experience as 97L does have a pretty good chance of development and the European model agrees with it um, going, because if we were to move forward um, you see this 95L the European does expect it to weaken but you see that 97L has a chance to develop into a tropical storm right behind it and while the European eventually does kill the storm it's um, it seems like both the European and GFS are agreeing that this will develop into a tropical storm and um so we certainly need to keep that in mind um and in terms of the forecasted um strength of the storm from the computer models it becomes a little bit more concerning because we do see a couple computer models attain um category one status with um invest 97 l which of course would be our first hurricane likely hurricane um hurricane fred um, however, again, take the National Hurricane Center's guidance over the computer models um, and the, currently the National Hurricane Center is giving this around medium chance of development being so there's a chance that this doesn't even develop into a tropical storm still. Um, but it's certainly something to keep in mind that the computer models have a higher potential for 97L than 95L. So this does have a higher chance of becoming a stronger tropical storm but, at, but as of right now the chance of this attained tropical storm status remains at a medium chance and so um, you guys need to keep that in mind and again for the Caribbean whether this develops or not expect enhanced rain showers associated with the invest 97L as it moves further westward and maybe gusty winds around the lesser Antilles so you guys need to certainly keep that in mind if you're within the Caribbean Sea as not one but two tropical waves will move through your area and and probably bring enhanced rain showers so keep that in mind for um this week in the caribbean islands and the lesser antilles but yeah guys i guess that's it for this video i thank guys for watching make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather because make sure to like if you like this video make sure to turn on post notifications if you want to see even more weather because i hope you guys have a good day